Welcome, people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and today we're going to talk about how to identify vintage liquid blue t-shirts and how to discern the repros from the originals. Let's get into it. So Liquid Blue has been around for over 30 years now, producing their iconic psychedelic tie-dye t-shirts. Uh, first really getting known for their Grateful Dead partnership. They produce so many iconic looking uh, t-shirts with Grateful Dead, but soon other companies took notice and wanted a piece of that iconic pie. Uh, companies like Sega and Disney, even Major League Baseball, all wanted uh, t-shirts of their own, and they got them throughout the 90s and early 2000s. And Liquid Blue continues to produce t-shirts to this day, though many are reprints and aren't nearly as popular as their vintage and original counterparts. And that leads us to ask, how do we know whether or not our Liquid Blue t-shirts are vintage originals or modern reproductions? Well, here are a few markers that you can use to discern between the two. First marker that we want to look at is the stitching on the arm and on the bottom hem of the t-shirt. And we're going to look for a single stitch or a double stitch. Up until the late 90s, early 2000s, this single stitch t-shirt was the standard for t-shirt production. And in the early 2000s, the industry switched to a double stitch. So if you find a liquid blue t-shirt with one single stitch on the arm hem here or on the bottom of the garment, you can be relatively confident that it's a vintage t-shirt. This rule applies for most other vintage t-shirts as well. Though there were double stitch t-shirts in the 90s, uh, predominantly it was single stitch. Now the second marker we're going to look at is the copyright information. Liquid Blue often license lots of their images, uh, whether it's a Disney character, Star Wars, or uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, they all had to be licensed, or they license these arts from the particular artist. And because of that, they would include copyright information on the t-shirt. So typically at the lower bottom portion of the jacket, either the left or the right, you can typically find a year and a copyright owner. And oftentimes this will help you narrow down the window in which your t-shirt was made. Now it's important to note just because the copyright was obtained in a particular year does not necessarily mean the t-shirt was produced in that very same year. It's more common, but not necessarily. Now, a reproduction may take a graphic that was originally used in 1995, but use it in a 2008 t-shirt. Typically though, because these copyright contracts do not last forever, they would have to obtain a new license in 2008. So they couldn't just use their old license in 1995. So you might find a 1995 graphic uh, that was originally used in 1995, but they had to renew the license in 2008. And in this case, 2008 would be used on the t-shirt to denote the copyright. In most cases, the copyright will generally give you a pretty close window to when the t-shirt was actually produced. Now, if you haven't yet been able to determine whether or not your t-shirt falls outside of the boundary of the 20 year vintage definition, then here's one more and perhaps the most authoritative marker to determine whether or not your t-shirt is vintage. And that is the internal care tag. The internal care tags are the most important uh, marker for determining whether or not something is vintage or not particularly with liquid blue because they only had a handful of different varieties of tags. This is the most important and most helpful. First, let's look at a couple of examples of the original and vintage liquid blue tag. You can see that here they are actually rather large in comparison to other brands uh, tags. They are a little bit chunky and heavy duty. They have liquid blue painted right over the whole front of the tag and the color is generally a more stark white rather than a different shade. Now that original tag lasted into the late 90s and early 2000s when Liquid Blue began using a smaller, uh, more brown looking tag than the previous larger white tag. And typically with this new tag, uh, the sizing tag would be from a different company. Let's say an Anvil tag or a Fruit of the Loom tag would also be attached behind the liquid blue tag. This was probably done 
uh, in my estimation, because that production moving out of the country uh, so much made it harder to get the t-shirts maybe they were using before. And so they decided just to take other companies' t-shirts, print on them, do their tie-dye to them, and then sell them like that. And that probably cut their cost down pretty tremendously. So if your liquid blue t-shirt has a large white tag like this, you can be relatively confident it is vintage. If it has a smaller tag like this, it still could be vintage though it might be right on the edge and you need to use the other tools to determine whether or not it's specifically vintage or not. So then finally, Liquid Blue has another tag or sort of a lack of tag that denotes the most modern versions of Liquid Blue t-shirts. And that's this right here. If you have a Liquid Blue t-shirt that only has printing on the back of the neck versus a tag, you have a modern reproduction. They may still have original graphics or original designs, but these are not from the original run of liquid blue t-shirts from the 90s and early 2000s. These are modern reprints. These t-shirts may still have some value because they are still pretty cool t-shirts and liquid blue is still a great company, but they are certainly not as desirable as some of the old stuff. And if you go online and buy a vintage t-shirt, uh, that you believe is an original and you spend a lot of money to get it and it turns out it's just one of these uh, reproductions i'm sure you're going to be upset and if you are the one on the other side selling that t-shirt advertising it as a vintage t-shirt you're going to probably get in a little bit of trouble from your buyer so in review we first want to check is it single or double stitched then we want to look whether or not the copyright falls outside of the 20 year definition of vintage clothing. Then we want to check the tag. Is it a vintage tag or is it tagless like a modern version? And then at this point, we should be able to determine whether or not our t-shirt is vintage or not. Now, there is a couple caveats here I want to mention briefly before we end. And that's because Liquid Blue did license and produce for other companies like this t-shirt for instance right here it actually has a disney world tag on it this was probably purchased at disney world sometime in the late 90s early 2000s and it is a liquid blue t-shirt because i can go down here and look and i see the copyright says liquid blue this is because liquid blue produced this t-shirt specifically for disney disney slapped on their tag rather than leaving the liquid blue tag but this is a liquid blue designed and produced t-shirt. You might find other companies that did roughly the same as liquid blue produced t-shirts for lots of different places. Like this one right here is actually produced for the Great Wolf Lodge. This was a resort that purchased the liquid blue t-shirts and slapped their logo on them. This one actually has a liquid blue tag on it, but this may not always be the case for every one. So you do wanna pay attention to those copyrights on the t-shirt and find out whether or not your t-shirt is actually a liquid blue t-shirt. Not all tie-dye t-shirts are liquid blue, but liquid blue probably makes the best tie-dye t-shirt. And I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like content like this. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.